Hi y'all, welcome back to Mean Green Game Day basketball season. It's our first episode and I am your host, Michelle Brooks. I'm so glad to be back with the guys that I was here with last year. We're at the desk. Justin Ballou, Jack Brown, Connor Hibbett. How does it feel guys? Welcome back. It's great to be back. Great to have basketball back. Great to be at the desk. I know, really finally. Is. I am ready for some UNT sports to really kick it into gear. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're let's, a basketball school now. Too. We're a basketball yeah, yeah. school. That's right. Okay. Well, let's kind of get into it. Off the bat, the Mean Green men's basketball team, they played Oklahoma Christian last week. Okay. It was a good win. We Good start. 84-53. Recap, how do we, how do y'all feel? I feel like it was a good start. We have things to work on. Justin? Definitely some things to work on. I think it, it was nice to get a win, first of all, off the start. Kind of, a, kind of a good way to wipe off some of that off-season rust that we might have had, but Division II opponents, so you got to take everything kind of with a grain of salt in this game. UNT, like you said, some things to improve on. A lot of communication mistakes, specifically on the defensive side of the ball early in this game. A lot of missed free throws in this game. A lot of a lot of rust, it looked like, just from this team. And this is a, a very young roster, very new team that the Mean Green have this season, so there's going to be growing pains. But again, good, good to get a win in the first game of the season and, and get that off your chest. I agree. For this team, it's a good start. However, I don't know about you guys. I was at that game and watching there at the end a couple times. I know we were up, but we did not play like it felt like we were up. We weren't making free throws. You're right, Justin. We went six for 13 at the line. Bell was our best man at the line of the night. He went three for five. Now, we got to do better. I know it was a win, and I I, we can argue all day, that's good, but at the end of the day, free throws win games. And when you play the better teams, they're going to start uh, hack-a-shack out there. They're going to start hacking you and putting you at the line, and if you can't make your free throws, it's not going to build well for you because when you play the better teams, again, they're going to make you, they're going to make you, uh, they're going to try to exploit your weakness. And but right now, that's our weakness, and we can't have that as our weakness. It is, but aside from free throws in that opener, I thought as the game progressed, UNT looked more comfortable in their offense. We were able to, to find some looks at, as that game progressed. J.J. Murray, former walk-on, got his first start ever in his career with the Mean Green. 13 points, one assist. How about seven rebounds for J.J. Murray, one of the smallest guys on the floor at all times. Good performance from him. Good performance from Tyler Perry, one of the newcomers on the scene that I know we're going to talk a lot about. 22 points in that opener from Tyler Perry. Brought the energy off the bench, so great games out of J.J. Murray and Tyler Perry. No, definitely. And that's right. Off the bench, Justin. He's coming up and he's competing. So I want to kind of jump ahead to this week. Okay. We, we played Buffalo and mm -hmm. it was a loss. It was our first loss of the season. And Buffalo is a good team. And we came out and we performed better than I thought. We lost 69 to 66. Now, was I happy at the end of the game? Absolutely not. And here's why. I'm going to go off for a second. Okay. Because free throws. All day. And after after the amount that we missed in the Oklahoma Christian game, I feel like that's just something that we, we know we should have been working on. But uh, we it was it was not good. And had we made uh, the amount of free throws that we missed in the last six minutes of the game, we would have won that game by a point. So um, I'm, I'm getting down off my soapbox now, everyone. Sorry. How did you all feel about the Buffalo game? <laughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, the Mean Green struggled at the very end, but I think that's just collectively, they're just trying to get used to each other again. Um, the number one thing that I've seen through the first two games is this is a whole new lineup for Grant McCaslin. This is small ball. You don't have Zach Simmons in there to play big man ball. Like, you have um, you got, you have guys like uh, Usman who, who can't play over 25 minutes, so you have to have guys who, who come in and play small ball. That's why we saw J.J. Murray get the start. I'm glad that we got to play Buffalo even though we lost that game. I thought very good litmus test for this team, very young team right out of the gate, played a Division II team in the opener, come back with one of the powerhouses in the MAC right now in Buffalo. This is a Bulls team that had given Michigan, one of the top teams in the country, had run for their money in their season opener. So impressive stuff from the Bulls. I'm glad we got to play that game. UNT, I think, comes away from this game, though, thinking they should have won. They were up 11 points with under nine minutes to go in that game. But credit the Bulls, they were able to hit some three-pointers, hit three straight three-pointers in that second half when UNT was up. And really, just in the second half, just caught fire from downtown. So give Buffalo a lot of credit for, for what they were able to do. But I think the Mean Green come away from this game thinking, you know, we had it in store. We had a chance at the very end when all was said and done to, to tie this game and send it to overtime. Tyler Perry makes a great play, steals the inbounds pass right at the very end, has a chance to tie it up at 69. 
line, misses the shot. They get another chance on an offensive rebound, and J.J. Murray misses as time expires. So two chances right there at the very end to send that game to overtime. But nonetheless, again, I'm glad we got to play a good team. Well, Justin, that's a good point. We shot 25% from the field in the second half. We are not contributing enough um, from just the starters in general. Mm -hmm. J.J. Murray, he had how many points? Three. Three. Okay, uh, Reuben Jones, six. Those are guys, Reuben Jones, guy last year that was contributing a, a lot more than he is right now. And we can't afford to have these guys starting over a player like Tyler Perry, who's coming in and he, what, he played off the bench. He, he had 18 points. He was our leading scorer. Yeah, leading scorer two games in a row, Tyler Perry has been. But you mentioned the free throws in the Buffalo game. They were 18 of 25, so the, so the numbers are there, but it was it was when they were missing. Those seven misses were all really costly. Thomas Bell and Ruben Jones both both missed free throws late in that game as UNT was trying to come back and build momentum that, that really just killed what they were trying to do. So really big misses in that game. And if you remember from last season, this wasn't a great free throw shooting team last season. Outside of JV and Hamlet, who shot 88%, no one on this roster was above 80%. So this was has sort of been a late lingering problem now for the past two seasons and if they want to compete with these top-notch teams in the country they're gonna to have to make their free throws. If you want to look at the bright side of this loss, Buffalo is one of the most experienced teams in the country. You got an all senior laden roster or starters I should say and UNT has got one of the youngest rosters at least coming into the season. When you look at the super senior factor we could have had some guys that could have come back but they decided to move on. We had Thomas Bell come back but really it's a brand new roster for UNT but again on the bright side you got a young roster that's competing with an experienced team like this in a game that arguably UNT should have won. So we, we have a lot of things uh, in front of us. We can still do a lot of great things this year. I think there is a whole lot of potential, and, and you can see it bit by bit with this team. A couple times you had Abu get the ball and you know dump it to Tyler, and then he cuts, and he is successful with that pass, and they do it here and there. So it's definitely, you're right, we're a young team. We only have five returners, 15 guys on the roster. So... I think that it's just time will tell, this team will develop, but I think that this Buffalo game says a lot for the team and where we stand right now. It's a big deal. So I kind of want to talk about expectations going into the rest of the season, but before I get into that, I had the chance to talk with J.J. Murray two weeks ago, right before we played in the exhibition game against Arkansas. He kind of let me know how it was to finally get into that last dance. Check it out. My whole dream was from like coming to Division One was like to play in the NCAA tournament, and so like last year obviously like we were supposed to have a chance to play in it with COVID, and then or well, last last year, and so uh, once we got to playing it this year, it was like a dream come true for me, you know. So um, it honestly felt good to know like the hard work paid off, you know. And now it's just you know we're trying to do it again. In that interview, JJ says, you know, it just gives you all the motivation you need to come back and do that again. And I believe him. I mean, even for myself, that seems like the ultimate dream to play NCAA basketball and then go to March Madness. So I think that kind of how does that what does that mean for these players, you know, that are coming to this team? We have 10 new guys on the roster. They have a lot to kind of live up to that's encouraging nerve-wracking what do y'all think well earlier in the show I said how we're a basketball school now when you go to March when you enter the tournament and you not only do you create like a national brand brand but you also for that time but you also can you also build for the future and so now kids are looking up to you like oh my gosh UNT that's cool they're a great basketball school you know if you if you can't go to a Kansas a Duke you're like okay maybe I can go to like a UNT maybe we can get some guys through the transfer portal whether they're JUCO or up or higher above, and then they move down to UNT. Um, as we saw, we got several transfers this season. A couple of them are already making a huge impact. We got one from Washington. Um, so I think it says a lot for the future of our program and not just right now. Okay, yeah, I mean, I agree with that about future of the program. Expectations, though, for the season, Connor? What, how do you feel? I mean, I know we've only played these two games. We played that exhibition game against Arkansas. We played really well. We yeah. lost by eight points. It was a really good showing, JJ even said. They've had the best film session they think they could have had that early in the season coming off that game. That's a really big deal. Um, I don't know. It's just time will tell for me with this team. I think that the starting five is really going to switch up here soon. Yeah, I think this team is going to be really sneaky overall. Um, 
I think they could be a three, four seed in the CUSA uh, tournament at the end of the year. Um, I think things just have to flow and mesh. That's why I'm not buying too much stock into if this team is offensively going to score enough or defensively not be sound enough. I think they're still learning how to play with each other. And I think you keep Perry on the bench because you have to have someone off the bench coming in and scoring. And that's why I think the small ball offense is something new that I've never seen McKazin do that's going to switch it up and, and confuse some teams later on. Yeah, I love the small ball lineup, and I think there's two reasons behind McCaslin going that route. The first is Abu Usman is, is sort of a work in progress and still a project at that center position. He lost a ton of weight coming into the season, over 60 pounds down, so good for him. But they're still trying to figure out what he can do both on offense and on defense. Obviously, he has big shoes to fill taking over for Zach Simmons. So I think he's still a work in progress, and they don't know if he's ready for, for starter minutes and, and to be the, the long-term option there. And I think the other reason is that McCaslin loves his guards. You know, J.J. Murray obviously starting these first two games. He knows, he knows what he gets out of Thomas. Bell, I know he's a forward, but knows what he gets out of his guards just in general. So I think it makes sense to go small ball through these first two games, kind of see what he has from, from the guys that he has last year while he develops Usman. Well, and that's what we're going to kind of get into later in the show is player development and what you can expect from these new guys. But first, we are a basketball school. That's right. We're a women's basketball school, too. So we're going to recap some of the games that they've already played when we come back. Stay with us. Day. We're glad you guys are here. Basketball season is here, and honestly, it's the best time of the year. I can't, you can't argue that against me. No, yeah, okay. It's the holiday um, season, too. So, yeah. uh, what? It's, it's the holiday season as well. Right. Everything's so, great. like, the happiest time of the year. It makes yeah. sense. Okay, it all correlates. All right, y'all. So, the, the women, they've played three games so far, and they are two and one. Okay, and those first two games, we came out, we scored really high. We blew the other teams out. We played USAO in Oklahoma, <laughs> okay? a smaller school, but we have a lot of girls contributing on this team, and I think it's a big deal. Obviously, we've got Quincy Noble. She's always someone to watch on this team, but we've also got some new girls joining in. Well, in that in that season opener, like you said, it was it was nice to see everybody contributing. It was Quincy Noble, Jay Zion Jackson, Tamisha Lampkin, and the newcomer Amber Dixon all scoring double digit points in this game. Really nice to see everybody getting involved. There were so many games last year where it was just Quincy Noble and Nia Boyd doing all the scoring. Those two picking each other up. So nice to get four girls and double digit figures in this game. Now, and Quincy was two from five for the from the three in this first game. So that was a good start for her. She's a big shooter for this team. She ended with 11 points, but we had 44 points come off the bench for this team. That's crazy for any team, I feel like. So I think that there's definitely a lot to watch. You mentioned Dixon. She had nine rebounds, which is really huge for this team, too. One thing that I think that we need to watch coming from this first game is turnovers. We had 18 turnovers. They allowed 19 points off that. That's a little bit too much, even in a blowout, in my opinion. I don't know. But going into that Howard game, that was another really good game, another win for us, 94-56. Quincy Noble was 5 from 7 at the 3. She was hot that game, and that's what this team needs, it looks like. We had another eight girls contribute from the bench. That's crazy. Connor, did, how do you feel about this well, game for the team? Well, I think it says a lot that you're, you're getting multiple girls involved because now you get that depth that you need. You want to test that depth early on. When you're playing teams that you know you're going to beat regardless, you need to test the depth. You need to make sure, because in basketball, you need six, seven, eight contributors. You can't just have three to four people you can rely on. This is not the, the NBA or the WNBA where you can say, okay, we got one or two star players and they can just take the ball and go with it. You, you need to have established depth. So I'm glad the coaching staff is uh, testing their depth to make sure that they're good for the long run as well. And in that Howard game, we really saw the scoring abil ability of all, these, of all these girls. 14 of 26 from the three-point line in this game, which set a new program record for this team for most three-pointers made in a single game. They shot over 53% from downtown in the game, shot close to 44% from the field for the game. So really impressive shooting numbers all around. Quincy Noble, 25 points on 8 of 12 shooting. As always, really great stuff from her. Three rebounds and an assist. Jay Zion Jackson, Tamisha Lampkin, a newcomer, Ali Gomez in this game, all double digit points. So Jay Zion Jackson, Tamisha Lampkin have been the two consistent so far in the two wins. So let's see if this trend can, can continue. And I am 
excited for this game. We had Gomez come in and she scored those points, but she also had eight rebounds. Mm. And she's not a big girl. She's not super tall. And we have some tall girls on this team. That was the team high for the for the day. So I feel like that goes to show that there is a lot of depth on this team. That being said, we came in, we lost to Missouri State. Okay. 50 to 56. We were at Missouri State, and this is a good team, Missouri State. I'm not, I, I won't let that go against the girls, but there was definitely some things that could have been done, and we struggled to, to just shoot the ball all night. Yeah, I, I think uh, Missouri, uh, Missouri State, this, they went to the Sweet 16 last year. Uh, this, this team is, is super good, super old. They know what they're doing. They have a bunch of returning starters. It was just a stinker of a game. No one could get a rhythm going. I think uh, Missouri State shot 13% from the three-point line. And total, it's, and overall, they just didn't have a good game. Noble was two for eight. Jazzy on Jackson, Madison Townley were the only people to go double figures in that game. But overall, that kind of depth we were talking about the first two games shrunk really fast when we start playing a good team. And it kind of makes me wonder how much we're going to have to re rely on Noble to get us over the hump. No, and I know, I know, I have the numbers on it, I keep saying, but only six girls contributed uh, points in that game, and, and it goes to show. But here's the thing, when you have a good player like Quincy Noble, you have to have other players willing to step up when she's off. I'm not going to say Quincy's a bad player because she was off for a night. That's just how it goes sometimes. She only shot four threes to begin with. She didn't make a single one, and that's how it goes. She still played hard defense. It was a close game. But other players have to step up. And we, we see, you know, Gomez stepping up. And, and Jazzy on Jackson played well. But when you say they scored double figures, Jazz and, and Maddie Townley, they each only scored 11 points. That's just not enough for your two top scorers. And this was sort of the problem last year. When Quincy Noble was off her game, the offense just couldn't go at all. And... First two games, we didn't see that this year. We saw everybody stepping up. Like you said, the inconsistency kind of showed up in this game against Missouri. 32% from the field, 1 of 11 on three-point shots, so 9% from, from the three-point line after they had set that program record. A little, little bit of a letdown game from, from games two to three. But you have to have other people step up other than Quincy Noble. It, it can't just be her this year. She's going to have really high expectations coming into the year. She was the second player in program history last year to be named All-Conference USA first team. She was the Conference USA co-player of the year for this upcoming season so I think for her she's gonna have to live up to her own personal expectations for this team to be successful as as well as this these newcomers living up to the team expectations well and I know Quincy and I know her really well personally I know the kind of player she is so I know that she is probably back in the gym she was in the gym the next day just working on her shot because it, it does stink to be off like that but my thing is the rest of the team just can't go downhill from there we had 24 turnovers in this game as well it was a high for us we went 11 from 20 at the free throw line and I said this earlier about the guys and I'll say it again free throws and defense win games and if they would have made half of those they would have tied the game this game could have gone into overtime so it's just little things like that that you have to work on but when it's earlier in the season and you compete with a good team like this you also can't be that upset so expectations going into the season for y'all. I feel good about where this team could go. I think there's a lot of players that still we, we haven't seen yet, and I think there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, I think you bringing up Ali Gomez, uh, Gomez and uh, Maddie Townley, those are rebounding people. I don't think we've had two people who can rebound like them and, uh, since we've had Anisha uh, George when she played like three years ago. Now she's playing for the national team somewhere. But I think in general, um, the first two games are a wash for me. I, I personally, I, I don't, you know, I'm not buying into everybody scoring because when we get down to the nitty gritty and play these good teams, like it's going to be tough to score and it just kind of showed our weaknesses. No, and I think it's going to be a big deal to see how this team comes out after this game. I know I, I've seen them practice and I, they have good culture and they have a really great coaching staff. So I think as, as a whole, they can come back and be fine from this. Well, and when you play up in competition, it can also make you stronger. Right. So that, that can also bode well for the long run. No, and, and, that, and that just goes to show, too. These girls, Quincy is a leader for the team, and so when she can't 
be there, then other girls need to step up. So someone that I think that is really interesting to watch it come into this role maybe is Jazzy on Jackson this season. Yeah, and she's a player that Quincy Noble personally is really excited to play with too. Keep in mind last year, Quincy Noble had Nia Boyd on her side. When Quincy Noble was off her game, it was Nia Boyd stepping up, doing the scoring, handling the offense, running things on offense. And when Quincy Noble kind of had the night off, and this year it's it's not that way. So Quincy Noble is going to have a lot more on her plate. People like Jazzy on Jackson, who have been around for a few near, few years now, Madison Townley, players like that will have to step up for this team to be successful. But in terms of expectations, in terms of the rest of the Conference USA West Division, I think this team's going to be middle of the pack. You still have Rice in the division, who's going to be a good team, even though they lost. Nancy Mulkey. Nancy Mulkey was a player who gave us yeah. and everybody in Conference USA a ton of issues last year. UTEP was a good team last year. La Tech still pretty solid in the division. So I think UT is or UNT is somewhere in that in that mix with those three teams. I don't I don't see us winning the winning the West Division with Rice sitting there, but I think they compete can compete for that second or third spot definitely. Well, and you make a good point. We I feel that same way about being middle of the pack. We have those teams that were sitting right near, they were close competition, but I think there's potential there. And you bring up Louisiana Tech, and it's kind of interesting because we have a new addition to the team from Louisiana Tech. She's a transfer, and when we come back, we're gonna dive into her and a little bit more newcomers for all of Mean Green basketball this season. Welcome back to Mean Green Game Day. Thanks for staying with us so far. I want to reintroduce these guys that I'm with. I'm your host, Michelle Brooks. I'm sure you haven't forgotten. But this is Justin Ballou, Jack Brown, and Connor Hibbett. They're pretty memorable, too. They're pretty memorable, too. All right, guys. So we have some newcomers all across Mean Green basketball, from the women's to the men's. And they are some faces that are making some noise, I feel like. I want to kind of dump, dive into the women first. We were just talking about one player that's kind of easy for us to go off of. Ali Gomez. She is just a really good player. She's transferred out of Fresno State. She is 41% from the three from the three last season for them. So this kind of gives me hope here for, mm. for contribution consistently. Obviously, she's been consistent for the team so far, but going forward. She has, yeah, and she's already got a lot of action with this team already getting getting some minutes in this lineup they say with players the best ability is availability and she has been available for fresno state the past few years averaging 29 or more minutes per game in every single season since 2017 with fresno state that is really impressive we're going to need those minutes out of her this year she's going to have to be that second scorer if jay on jackson can't be that person for unt so i'm really excited about her she start, she started the first three games already for north texas like i said jaylee mitchell trying to get her involved with this offense get her chemistry up with the players already so really excited to see what what gomez brings yeah and i just speaking on that the i got to talk to the play-by-play -play guy about this and i think the number one thing he's been surprised with is the rebounding we already touched on that a little bit but her being a graduate student and coming over here, it's her fifth year playing basketball. I think her leadership and her experience is gonna take this team, hopefully to the next level. If Quincy Noble, like, like you said, has an off night. No, I'm glad you bring that up, Jack. She is a graduate student and she's a transfer from Fresno State, but she's actually originally from Irving MacArthur. She's a local, local kid. She's played here forever around all these girls. So I think that there's a lot of natural chemistry that comes with that too, whether they played on the same team or against each other. There's a huge community here in DFW like that. So I think for her, that's a big deal. But there is a, another graduate student here making some noise too. Justin, you want to you want to mention? Yeah, how about how about Amber Dixon? We steal her from Law Tech, first of all. So you steal one of the best players from a rival school. She's coming off a pretty impressive season last year with Law Tech. Averaged close to 10 points, six and a half rebounds, three assists. And she has started 53 games over the past two seasons for Law Tech. So brings a lot of experience in Conference USA to the table for this team. She's a big body. She's, she's got some of that rebounding ability that we mentioned with, with uh, Ali Gomez, as well as with Madison Townley. So these three are gonna have to be huge on the rebounding end for UNT this season. Well, and she's another local kid. I'm sorry, I have to keep bringing it up, but she's at a Mansfield Summit. These are all powerhouse basketball schools in the DFW area. So it just goes to show that Jaylee Mitchell is really good at recruiting and good at recruiting local. I feel like in any sport, that's really good to dive into your local area for those kids. So I think it makes a big difference, but she compiled 895 points throughout her four years at Louisiana Tech. 
So I'm expecting big numbers from her. So far, she's played well and she's contributed, but I see her developing into a big part of this team throughout the season. And you, we faced her twice last season, and in those two games, she compiled 29 points, 10 rebounds, and five assists. So it's good to have that kind of player now on our team and a player that we don't have to worry about facing now. So we were going against her, Jaylee Mitchell saw her and was like, hey, she's from DFW, let's bring her home. <laughs> credit Jaylee Mitchell for going out and recruiting locally and credit her for finding players that can rebound. And rebounding was a huge issue with this women's team last year. So it's good that we got some recruits now that can do that. No, it, it really does make a big difference, but it's, it's funny. It's funny for sure that she was able to come home here to UNT and locally but looking at another big player we have but we haven't seen a whole lot from she's contributed here and there Jalen Mallard okay she's a South Alabama transfer she's a junior so she's not a grad student but she's developing her game and she's secured four double doubles in her last four outings with the, her last team so I'm confident to see her develop. You were just talking about rebounds. That's big for this team. And that's big for Jalen Mallard as well. She's not going to play as much as these uh, as these other two girls I wouldn't expect, but she's played uh, she's played in 22 games the last season at, Al at South Alabama. Pretty impressive there. She's got nine, she averaged nine points a game, six rebounds, one assist. So pretty solid numbers from her at South Alabama. Now jumping up a step in the conference now to Conference USA. We'll see how her game progresses. But through, through three games this year, she's not getting the minutes that she got over at South Alabama, but she's averaging seven and a half points, four rebounds and, sh and is shooting an, an impressive 54% from the field. So if she can continue that, she can be one of these bench scorers that we mentioned having a good game in the opener. She can be one of these players that come off the bench and give you some good minutes and can score some points for you. Well, and she's 6'2". I mean, I feel like that yep. just makes a big deal off the bat. We already have, you know, tall starters, but having someone to come off the bench that can be a strong mm -hmm. scorer and contributor is a big deal. Good rebounder as well. Another no, one. Exactly. And so we have some other people coming off the bench on the men's side. A big name that we probably said a bunch you've heard already, Tyler Perry, okay? He's a Juco product. That's my favorite kind of thing. Those are the athletes that work super hard. I mean, J.J. Murray was a Juco product, and I think that maybe Tyler Perry is looking at him and you know, is is kind of like, okay, this is what I can I can go to coming into March Madness. How are you guys feeling about Tyler Perry? Well, I think calling him a, a JUCO transfer is selling him short. This guy, <laughs> he's a former national champion at the JUCO level and was the NG, NG, NJCAA tournament MVP. So he's the best player at the JUCO level on the best JUCO level team. So he's more than just a JUCO transfer, but you know, a JUCO, a JUCO transfer nonetheless. I think Mean Green fans should be very excited about him and his three-point shooting ability. When players transfer from lower level divisions, Division One, Division Two, up to the D1 level, they struggle to adjust to the speed of the game, and that's mainly the thing that holds them back. But he's got a, he's got a really smooth shot. He shoots the ball very well, and shooting is one of the things that transfers from lower levels to upper levels, because it's just shooting the ball. If you can shoot the ball with a hand in your face, you can shoot the ball with a hand in your face. And he can do that, and he, he shot the ball really well so far for the Mean Green through, through, through three games so far, shooting the ball well from three-point range. So. Very excited to see what he brings. McCaslin bring him off the bench in the first few games. How about that? Just about 60% from behind the arc. That's incredible. I know it's a small sample of, of shots, but nonetheless, he's been impressive. He can create space, and you'll, you'll always need that elite guard that you, can, uh, that you can rely on. He can have the ball in his hands when you need a clutch play, and he is that clutch player to make those kinds of plays down, down the stretch. So it's great to have a guy like that on our team. Well, so, and we've been talking offense a lot, but defensively, he's a really good defender. Jack, watching Tyler Perry, I feel really good about this defense as well. Yeah, it's something you don't expect with him being 5'11 and kind of coming off the bench and being a big scorer like he is. He gives me like Lou William type, like a type vibe from him. Uh, that's an NBA player who won six man of the year, coming off the bench is just a bucket getter. So I, I, I feel like McCaslin at first thought he was losing defense, bringing him in, but the first couple of games, he's really proven himself in every area. And, well, and another, oh. Keep in mind that we lost James Reese, and Tyler Perry reminds me a lot of James Reese. James Reese was most reliable three-point shooter last year, one of the best uh, free throw shooters as well. Tyler Perry's going to kind of step into that James Reese role from a season ago, maybe run a little bit of point guard as well. Well, another player that we were kind of talking about earlier before the show that I know, um, Jack, you're kind of interested to see how he develops at least over the season. He hasn't played a whole lot yet. Matt Stone. Yeah, Matty Stone. I think... I think Matthew Stone has the ability to, 
to be elite. I really do. I think he's crafty, has elite ball skills, and he can play defense. It's kind of like DJ Draper. I don't know if you remember him. A 3 and D guy that <laughs> came off I the bench. remember bin. DJ Draper. <laughs> wow. Hit some big shots for us. I think bringing him in and kind of taking him that prototype, and but he can also make create his own shot is going to make him crazy for us. And he's played with Bajan Cortez and Damian Collins, who's at uh, University of Kentucky, and Bajan's at Oklahoma. So he's got he's played in these big tournaments and and club ball. So he's he's someone that I'm excited to see in the future. Probably not going to get a lot of playing time right now, but in the future he will. He won't, but his time is coming. He's he's from Kingfisher, Oklahoma. He's a th uh, four year starter down uh, up there at Oklahoma. Won two two state championships. He was a three star recruit. So we get three star recruit here coming in now. He chose North Texas over Oklahoma State, Ole Miss and Tulsa. So four pretty good offers that he chose North Texas over clearly has already bought into what we're building here in this basketball program. So I am very excited about him and what he, what he can do in the future for this team. He already had his introduction to Mean Green Nation, hit a three pointer game was already over a little bit in the season opener when he hit that shot. But nonetheless, the crowd was hyped to see him going. And I, I think everybody's excited. If you don't know his name yet, Matt Stone, learn the name. It was like, what, the last minute of the yeah. game he pulls it, it was Cold, ice in his veins. It was a good shot. Yes. The gym went crazy. Had to be there, honestly. Stone cold shot, but he had over 1,500 points in high school as well. So that guy obviously has a, uh, elite ball skills. So. Well, I'm excited to see his development. One player that we're kind of seeing develop game by game is num number 44. Right. He's coming in for Usman. He's giving him you know, that breather. And he is a fifth-year transfer from Washington. So he's older. He's developed. He averages, you know, six points a game, four rebounds at his last school, but he came here for a reason. He led the team with 28 blocks. Okay, so coming in, defense heavy team is what UNT is. Grant McCaslin prides himself in making these guys work hard. Watching JJ Murray on defense is probably my favorite thing about this team. So I'm excited to see him come in and see how he develops in this this defense. Yeah, definitely. You, you can't miss Hamir Wright when you watch this team. He's 6'8", 208. He stands out. He stands above the crowd, literally and physically. Like you said, transfer from Washington has started 81 games over the past few years, and or he started 81 games, played in 122 games in the Pac-12. So brings a lot of experience to this team, a lot of power five experience at that playing in the, in the Pac-12. Huge guy. He's going to play some of that four role that Thomas Bell plays, kept keep him fresh, coming off the bench this year probably for him. I'm very excited about Hamir Wright. Probably going to serve a little bit of that bench role this season, but another guy like Matt Stone who in the future will have his role increased as, as he moves along here. Well, and I see him playing a, a, every game at least. I mean, I know that he'll play, he'll stay on the bench, but we'll see. Coming up, though, we're going to dive into some more non-conference games that we can hopefully see more of these players come out and develop and how that is going to go. And uh, it's kind of going to get fun. What to watch for? Stay with us. Welcome back to the first episode of Mean Green Game Day basketball season. We're glad you're here and we're glad to be here. So we have non-conference games, quite a few, and then we're going to wait and you're not going to see us for a while and then we'll come back and go into conference. But non-conference is going to be kind of fun, especially for the guys, okay? Justin has a, a game coming up that he really wants to tell everyone about, Justin. Well, on the men's side of things, that Kansas game next week on Thanksgiving is going to be so intriguing for so many reasons. First off, it's part of the ESPN Events Invitational Tournament, which means that depending on if UNT wins or loses that game, they will get to play either Dayton, Miami, Alabama, Iona, Belmont, or Drake. Eight good teams there, yeah. all tournament, you know, teams that want to be in the tournament. So great opportunity if they win or lose that game to get one of those teams. But this Kansas game, I mean, number three team in the nation, a program that's been so su successful under Bill Self there, been there forever. They already have a big win this year over Michigan State, who is a ranked team. So I'm interested to see how UNT plays in this game. And I would encourage you to look beyond the final score of this UNT-Kansas game. Watch how UNT communicates in this game on offense and on defense. This will only be their fourth game of the season. Like we said, a very young team, tough task, asking them to go against the number three team in the nation. But watch how they communicate. This will kind of be the test where they played three games now. You expect them to have some chemistry, have, have some opportunities to, to make some plays. So we'll see where they can get with this Kansas game. We know Grant McCaslin can defend anybody with his man-to-man -man defense. So I like our, our chances defensively against Kansas. It's, it's going to be if the question is, is, is going to be if we can score enough points 
on the Jayhawks. And we talked about Tyler Perry for us on the perimeter. Well, they've got a guy on the perimeter that's really good. They got a transfer from Arizona State, Remy Martin. Very underrated player, in my opinion. I think he's one of the most underrated transfers this whole entire offseason. Uh, he's a guy that's going to help the perimeter shooting for Kansas improve. That was one of their weaknesses last year. But Kansas brings back four or five starters. They're gonna, they're, they also have eight new players, including Remy Martin. Uh, but that's a guy we have to watch for because that – the weakness for the Jayhawks last year was the perimeter game, but he's going to really improve that. So our defense is going to have to play um, uh, around the arc as well to, to defend Kansas. Well, and Justin, you said it. We're a very defensive heavy team, and I'm confident to see how we are going to perform against them defensively. I think it's going to be really important for our offense to just be productive and put points on the board that's going to be a really big deal but yeah. Yeah. obviously this game is going to be an exciting one Jack what, is there another non-conference game that you're looking forward to yeah we might have to road trip from Orlando from the Kansas game up to Wichita that playing it playing at Wichita State is a classic game like you, you can't you can't miss out on playing them but another thing I want to highlight is Grant McCaslin has free 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 reign from uh, Ren Baker to pick up any games he wants so if we lose, we happen to lose to Kansas. I'm not saying we will or we won't. We'll, we'll, we will win. But if we if we lose, we, we have a weak stretch there where we don't play anybody. And we saw last year where McCaslin picked up a game against Loyola, West Virginia. So I think there's a good chance for even crazier non-conference games to be added to the schedule. But the Wichita State game, men's and women's plays Wichita State this year. That's going to be interesting because this is a future potential AAC rivalry moving to the AAC in a few years. And Wichita State is a group of five team that in men's basketball has made a name for themselves, made the final four back in 2013, have had a lot of tournament success since that point. So another group of five team here that we're going to have to face, good group of five school and a potential rivalry in the in the making here. So I'm interested to see this, this Shockers game for sure. And had not been for Louisville in 2013, it's possible Wichita State could have played for the national championship. They would have played Michigan. I don't know if they would have won that game, but nonetheless, Cinderella story for Wichita State. And so when UNT plays a team like a Wichita State, we're moving into the American Athletic Conference, uh, obviously very soon, that that also puts your name on the map even more so, e extending to the fact that we've already put our name on the map with what we did through March Madness uh, several months ago. But I think this is going to be a fun basketball rivalry because Wichita State doesn't have a football team and Wichita State's going to be good in basketball every year and we expect right. us to be good in basketball every year. So this this has potential to be exciting in the future. We're just getting a little glimpse of it, a little preview of it this year. So looking forward to that for sure. No, well, every year Wichita State is definitely one of those teams that you hear about and you know that's a basketball school that you're going to watch when you're filling out your March Madness bracket. You're like, okay, they could upset this team. Okay, there's a possibility. So that game will definitely be something good and just exciting and it's all about the atmosphere as well I feel like for this team and I think that they thrive in well paced games and I think that those are going to be some exciting games so it'll be interesting to see how they handle it but looking ahead or looking over more so to the women's you said we play Wichita State we do they're three and oh they're good they're a good team yeah. mm -hmm. it's gonna be difficult what to what do they need to watch for? Well, they, Wichita State struggled last year in women's basketball, but like you said, off to the off to the good start. Another potential rivalry there for for women's brewing. We'll see if Quincy Noble can have one of her one of her great games. It's going to have to be for, for for UNT to have success against Wichita State. Yeah, they have a really strong vocal leader who's a senior, Asia Strong, averages 12 points a game. She's a forward, six two. She can play guard. She can play in the paint. Um, and they also have DJ McCarty from DeSoto. So that's a, a shiny new prospect they have up there. Now, and DeSoto is another one of those schools who has a really consistently good women's basketball team. I think they won state two years ago. So um, definitely a good player, going to be a game to watch. Another game to watch that I'm really excited for is when the girls play Oklahoma State. And here's why. Oklahoma State has Lauren Field. She's their starting point guard. And that girl can play. But here is why I like this matchup. Lauren Fields and Quincy Noble have been playing basketball with each other since seventh grade, coaching on the same team, playing against each other. They know each other well and they know each other's game. And I think that that will play a big role in this game, especially because of how big Quincy is for this team. 
And you know what you didn't mention is that Nia Boyd is now at Oklahoma State. You're right. So, <laughs> not, so last year we saw this great duo, Quincy Noble, Nia Boyd, shining here in Denton. And now uh, Nia Boyd made the decision to switch, switch over to Oklahoma State. Now they're going against each other. So I don't know if there's any bad blood there. Probably not. You know, Nia Boyd had a great season here last year, so I, I doubt so. there is. But this will be an interesting matchup now because they've been used to playing with each other. Now they're going against each other. Might even be guarding each other in that game too. So that'll be a lot of fun for sure. It's definitely a game to watch. How do you guys feel about it? It's going to be difficult. Uh, but I think with UNT, with a couple of the players for UNT being, being familiar with a couple of the players for Oklahoma State, I always think that makes it easier because you're more familiar with your opponent. You know how to match up with them. So maybe that can be a helpful factor in that game. I believe this is a home game for women's basketball, yeah. too. Yeah, and, so and, it's a big home And game. that'll be big because I think Oklahoma State finished third last year in the Big 12 in women's basketball. So they've been building a pretty good program there. We get them here in Denton at home. So, I mean, that'll be a fun game definitely on the women's side. It'll definitely be a game to watch. So I say we all go together. We'll sit in the stands. Mm, cheer I've, loud. It, yeah, 100%. Definitely. I have Quincy <laughs> going off, like seven mm. threes that game. It'll be a good one. When we come back, stay with us. We're almost done, but it's kind of the best part of the show. We're going to take a little bit of a different take on predictions. You'll see when we come back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back to Mean Green Game Day. We're almost done, so thanks for staying with us to get here. All right, we're going to do some predictions, but it's a little bit different if you've watched with us before. Usually we do games of the week, other teams. We are going to do some predictions on some upcoming matchups for the Mean Green men and women's basketball teams. Um, to start it off, Kansas. Okay, we were just talking about this game. It's going to be really, really exciting to watch. Um, I've got Kansas, though, guys. <laughs> I mean, this is this is going to be the first time in this season that we play outside of the pit. Very young roster. It's not quite a road game, but it's a game away from home that they're going to have to prepare for going against number three team in the nation, especially with how we looked in our only other good non-conference game against Buffalo. I'm going to have to go with Kansas here. Yeah, I totally agree. Kansas is going to win this game. I think it's just too close from the beginning of the season. We're still trying to mesh. We're still trying to grow together. I think this is one of those games where you look at it, you're like, this is kind of like a measuring stick kind of game. You see where your team is more so than a win or a loss. I'm going to go with the Jayhawks in this game. Uh, they're going to be one of the most difficult teams, one of the most difficult teams to beat in basketball in the country. But I want to see how UNT fights in this game. I'm really looking forward to this. Exactly. Watch how we play in this game. It's not really about the final score. I, I think you want to see development, you want to see improvement, and you want to see them communicating well on, on defense and on offense in this game. So more than the final score in this Kansas game. And that's what you said earlier, Jack, is Grant McCaslin does this on purpose. And Connor, you're right, as a measuring stick. So we'll see where these guys kind of end up after it. I'm confident, though, to see how we come out. I think we're going to play well. I just don't know what that final score like might be. It's lose kind of attitude. Yeah, right. We, we, we're not, yeah, okay. Okay, Connor. Um, women's, okay, let's jump around. We're going to do SMU versus UNT, right? Here in our own backyard, but up the street at SMU, right? No, this is here. This is here? Yeah. Okay, so I have Still UNT in this game. I think no brainer. SMU is our rival. We got them. They're excited for this game for sure. Well, I mean, our team is. Uh, nice to re nice to renew this SMU rivalry in a sport other than football. Obviously, they've had our number in football for the past few years. But first time since 2018 that we're going to get them in women's basketball. UNT hasn't fared well against them two and five all time. I think they get that their third win this year. I'm going with North Texas to win this one. SMU has some questions coming into this year with their roster, so I'm going to pick us. Yeah, I don't really mess with SMU. And also, <laughs> playing here at home is a big factor. Ponies don't fly. Ponies don't fly, eagles fly. I'm going to go with UNT in this game. Pony down. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you for that one as well, Connor. We appreciate it. Okay, there I can't wait go. to see what Connor has for us next on this next prediction. We're going to jump right back over to the men. Nevada versus UNT. This game will be interesting matchup for sure. I'm going to go with the mean green. I did this a lot during football season. I, I'm, I bleed green. This is mean green game day. 
I'm going to go with Mean Green on this game. Yeah, Nevada's expected to be one of the better teams in the Mountain West this year. I think they're expected to finish third, finish third last year. They already have a big upset uh, loss this year against San Diego. They have a really tough non-conference schedule too this year. So we're going to see how they fare during that stretch. They're going to come in to Denton having already played a brutal stretch. So I think they're going to be beat up from that. I think this is the U UNT's biggest non-conference game at home this year. So I think they're going to get a win this one. Give me UNT. Yeah, like I said earlier, UNT being sneaky, I think they'll they'll sneak one out and, and prove them wrong. UNT. I think this is gonna be a really really close game. I suggest you go to it if you can. I'm gonna I pick I'll pick UNT in a close game. And I think you're right. It being at home, it plays a big factor in this game. So it'll be really good vibes. The guys always say, pack the pit, and that's what the fans <laughs> have to do. We gotta pack the pit on that one. All right. Over to the women's again, Wichita State versus UNT. We were just talking about this game. It's going to be a really good matchup. I said Wichita State's 3-0 and right now. They're a good team, but I'm going to go with UNT for this game. I think that they are going to pull it out. I'm not, I'm not too worried that UNT is going to falter here. Wichita State off to a good start, but had a had a bad season last year, and they really struggled on the road. And this year, if you look at their schedule, their their last three uh, non-conference games are the game at North Texas, then they play Kansas, and then they play at Oklahoma. So they're going to be getting some really tough opponents are just around us on their schedule. So I think they might be overlooking us, maybe to those couple Big 12 teams. So I'm going to take us just with Wichita State, maybe look overlooking us in this game, especially it being a home game too. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It being a home game, I feel like Noble is really going to feel comfortable and, and smooth, so I'm going UNT. Yeah, I think UNT will maybe shock Wichita State. Mm -hmm. I just really see UNT growing from this Missouri State loss that just happened because they were another like tough, gritty team to play, especially defensively, and that's how I see this Wichita State game going. I think it's going to be a close one for sure. It'll be a good one to watch. Um, the men versus Wichita State. This game is going to be really good. We were just talking about it. It's a matchup we're excited for. I chose Wichita State in this game. I like this team. Like I said earlier, they're a team you hear their name every year. They're a good school. I think it's going to be a really, really good game. I think so, too. This is going to be the first big, true road game for the Mean Green this year. The game I mentioned versus Kansas is a neutral site game. All of our other big non-conference games are at home. So this is gonna be a little bit of a switch up going up to Wichita State. Really tough team to play. We're going with home field advantage seems to be the trend. So I'm gonna take Wichita State in this one. Yeah, I think um, with making our picks before the show, I think, you know, you know, I might've forgot what I made, but right now I'm thinking U and T. So we'll see <laughs> if it's the right Let's go. It's All UNT. right. Ja oh, I Jack knew, was I knew right about his pick. I knew it from the beginning, so UNT. I'm not exactly He's very sure. confident, though. He's very confident. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how much success UNT is going to, be, going to be having against Kansas teams this year, so I'm going to pick Wichita State. Like, like Justin said, it's, you're, it's going to be the first true road game. you got a young roster, so I think, I think it's going to be a little bit too much to handle. Fast-paced game. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing, again, how we compete in this game, but I'll pick Wichita State. But I do think we, we keep it competitive. I think so too. It'll be a good one. Another competitive game that we are going to predict, and it's one that we were just talking about again, Oklahoma State versus UNT. This game was hard for me because we talked about that history. Nia Boyd came from UNT, and Jaylee Mitchell knows how to get her girls, I think, to cover Nia Boyd. I mean, after you have a player like that and you develop them, and then they go on to a bigger, better school, essentially. She knows her game, she knows her craft. So I think that we're gonna be able to guard her well and same thing, cover, co covering Lauren Fields. But I think that Oklahoma State's just gonna get this W at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, I Quincy Noble versus Nia Boyd. I mean, what more could you ask for? Game. Just the, the player matchup right there is, is just gonna be so much fun. But Oklahoma State, pretty good team last year, 19 and nine overall. Third in the Big 12. Now, the theme in women's basketball seems to be that teams play a lot better at home than they do on the road. Cowgirls follow that trend, and Oklahoma State plays really well at home, not so well on the road. This is in, in Stillwater. So I'm, actually, this is here, isn't it? I think so. Oh, this yeah. is here. Okay, I'm still going to take the Cowgirls, though. They're a good Big 12 team, so I'm going to take them. They're currently first in the Big 12, I believe. True. Nia Boyd, I mean, you mentioned Jalen Mitchell knows how to scheme up against her, but Nia Boyd knows how to go against that scheme, too. And so Nia Boyd is very comfortable in ways. this gym, so she's that's playing true. at yeah, home, that's essentially. That's, that's we'll kind of scary. With a chip on her shoulder, you know? Yeah. How do you feel about this game, Jack? 
I think Oklahoma State has some bench players that could start on our team. And so I, just with that being said, in the most respectful way, I'm <laughs> taking Oklahoma State. I just want to be different. I, w I went with UNT in this game. I'm not going to poke fun at Oklahoma State, but I think UNT finds a way to win in a huge upset. <laughs> huge upset, okay. Poke fun, Connor, thank you. All righty, yeah. Tulsa and UNT, it's the last matchup that we're gonna predict. It's another one that is gonna be interesting, but I have the mean green in this one. I think that we're gonna come out with a win. I think that this is one of those non-conference games that's gonna be easy for us to see where we're at and take care of this team. Another big home non-conference game and another potential AAC rivalry there, sitting there with Tulsa. Tulsa, not a great team last year, 5-14 and 14 overall. Another team that plays a pretty brutal non-conference schedule before they play us uh, towards the end of this, their schedule. So I'm going to go with UNT here again. Home court, men's team plays great at home with that crowd. So give me UNT. Yeah, I'm going UNT as well. I don't think Tulsa has enough firepower to keep up with us with their defense. Yeah, I'm going to pick UNT. I think we're going to be golden in this game. I think we're going to blow the hurricane out. How do you like prepare? Like, <laughs> how do you like do Sometimes this? Sometimes I just like to be prepared. off the it's noggin. Like Connor has the natural like dad joke gene in yeah. his body. He all must. right. Well, can I get a go mean green then? I mean, we all chose UNT. That's really that's oh, that's that's scary green. though because that's, that's, like, that can't be a good thing. Okay, wait. Someone <laughs> knock on wood. Jack, change your <laughs> change your pick. Someone do that. Okay. Well, we will see how these games turn out. It's going to be exciting non-conference start to the season for both the men and the women's team. Thanks for sticking with us, and we'll see you very, very soon, maybe at the start of the conference tournament. Yeah. Thanks for joining Thank us. You.